Okay, we're good. We're recording. Thanks, Justin. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Oh, no. <laughs> good evening. Okay. So uh, today we are going to present uh, <clears throat> learning and evidence analytics framework. We call it DEEP, Design and Large Scale Implementation of Learning Analytics Driven Infrastructure in Japan. So uh, I'm Hiroaki Ogata uh, from Kyoto University. Also, uh, Brendan Flanagan and Little Majinda, uh, they are also give a talk later. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, here is uh, the members of our lab. So we have uh, certified uh, research members from 10 different countries. So also we are working on some uh, multiple projects. Um, maybe you can check our web, web page uh, if you want. And so today I uh, we will uh, present uh, the learning and analytics uh, framework in Japan and also learning and evidence uh, framework. Okay. <clears throat> so here is a uh, Japanese education context. So uh, in K twelve education. Uh, we have a common curriculum, so, so that is uh, des designed by the uh, Ministry of Education. And also uh, the Ministry of Education provides a textbook for free for all the, to the, all the students in K-12. Um, the most of the case, yeah, it's a teacher-centric uh, classroom. So the students are very uh, quiet in the classroom, <laughs> yeah. And in the university level, uh, so the entrance exam is very difficult, uh, and but graduation is not so, <laughs> yeah. And tuition is uh, so around uh, 5,000 uh, US dollar per year for public university and the double for the private university. And the most of the uh, case, the parents pay the tuition. So uh, there are uh, uh, 35 thousand uh, uh, schools from elementary and to the university level in Japan. So we are going to connect all the uh, learning logs in uh, whole country. So uh, we have started a Giga School project in Japan, at, not with Japanese government, has <laughs> already uh, started and <clears throat> distributed one um, computer for one student uh, in whole Japan, especially in elementary to uh, junior high school uh, since last year until the March uh, this year. And also here is the budget and so also we are going to collect all the uh, educational data from the uh, by using this kind of the device. So we are getting ready for the national wide learning analytics. So what we are going uh, we want to do is the uh, to record all the learning and teaching process uh, throughout the lifetime and nation, nationwide and to use the data for improving education. Yeah, for example, from the elementary school. Currently, we are fo focused on the, uh, uh, the data from elementary school to the uh, university level, yeah. So we are, we are now collecting all the data in not only inside the school, but also outside uh, school so that <clears throat> we provide tablet PC and then they can use the tablet in not only inside classroom, but also outside classroom. So we can collect all the learning and teaching process and then we can provide some feedback to the uh, uh, student and the teachers. So the 
main objective of our learning analytics project is, uh, is that uh, minimize the uh, learning, uh, learners learning performance, learning experience, and also uh, maximize, okay, <laughs> minimize the teacher's time and effort. So we got uh, several uh, research fund. And so our framework was now used, has been used in different universities and schools in, in Japan, also in Taiwan, and also in India and China and Turkey, Turkey uh, other countries, yeah. So we want to share some experience and data and tools and write the paper together. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Brendan Flanagan. And I'll be uh, presenting on uh, the next, uh, next part of the presentation. Um, so we'll be looking more at the, uh, the platform that we've uh, that we've uh, been developing at Kyoto University. Um, so um, it's it's a uh, learning evidence analytics uh, framework that we call uh, LEAF, and it's made up of um, uh, existing a uh, lot of um, educational institutions already have some sort of existing uh, infrastructure. It might be uh, an LMS or a, um, uh, SIS system, um, and we try and uh, kind of piggyback onto that. Um, we have also developed a uh, an ebook reading system called Bookroll, uh, which is which is the uh, center of a lot of the research that we do. Um, we also developed an LA dashboard and uh, an LA uh, learning analytics um, data processing engine called LA Engine. Um, where we we do uh, some data analysis and also uh, incorporate some uh, uh, actual modeling and things like that of students and um, LA view which is the it's basically the user facing uh, aspect of uh, our learning analytics system that provides feedback to students and also teachers and administrators so um, all of the main stakeholders and these sections of the system are accessible via LTI. So we can integrate with say Moodle or Canvas or um, Sakai or lots of different uh, learning management systems. Um, and the last section of the um, LEAF framework is the evidence portal. So um, this kind of takes uh, um, the, the analytics that's been done in, uh, the, in LA view and then we try to look for actual um, uh, teacher learning cases where um, learning analytics has been used uh, to good effect. And uh, so collecting that, um, automating the collection of that and also um, working towards uh, being able to search those uh, evidence cases and recommend to uh, stakeholders. Um, so uh, book roll, uh, we've been developing book roll for uh, around about uh, four or five years now, and um, it it basically um, it enables teachers to share uh, learning contents quite easily. So uh, teachers can upload PDFs to book roll um, quite easily, and then uh, students can uh, browse them when they're logged in. And um, all of the actions in book roll are uh, logged as XAPI data to an LRS. Um, so we can see when a student opened a book or added a memo, what did they write in the memo? Um, and we can we also have uh, when those events occurred. So we can basically um, analyze the students' uh, reading behaviors in book roll. Um, recently, last year, we also added um, additional features such as uh, uploading uh, audio narration, say from an instructor. Um, this was uh, particularly because a lot of classes were going online and also um, asynchronous. So having that ability um, enabled us to support a lot of uh, um, 
a lot of teachers last year and um, switching to online classes. Um, this is uh, just a brief overview of um, the kind of uh, um, visualizations that we provide in LA View. Um, so we have some, um, we, we can actually see here from the teacher's uh, perspective, we can see where students have actually done mark, markers. So where have they highlighted on the page in book roll? Um, the amount of engagement um, while reading and things like that. Um, we also have real-time uh, graphs here to actually show where uh, students are reading in uh, comparison to the teacher. So the teacher can modify um, the speed at which they're presenting and things like that to compensate for um, uh, students. Uh, okay. Um, so we have uh, page-wise annotations and reading behaviors. So we can see here, um, we have two different types of markers. We have uh, yellow and red markers, which are for, um, yellow is for uh, important, um, sorry, yellow is for difficult um, uh, sections and red is for important uh, sections in the book. So we can see this is the pages uh, of the book across here and then the numbers of markers. Um, we also have an overview of the numbers of memos that students can write. So um, initially we supported text memos. Um, so teachers can actually see what uh, students are writing in the memos in book roll. Um, so some teachers use those uh, memos for students to actually ask questions about content uh, directly in book roll. And we can also see how much uh, time students are spending reading on each page. Uh, Okay, um, and in our system also, um, based on uh, analytics of uh, the reading behaviors, we can uh, send interventions by email. Um, so say here, they have um, an intervention, did you read all the pages you're assigned? Um, so this is completion of uh, the book. And we can also see um, uh, the number of markers and things like that per student. Um, and then the teacher's able to select and send an email to students quite easily based on those uh, analytics here. Um, here's a, a brief uh, example of um, the types of uh, email interventions that can be sent. Um, and we also have templates that uh, teachers can use to, uh, to quickly um, come up with those uh, intervention um, email body text. Um, and as we're looking to not only uh, do learning analytics just at the single institution level, we're looking at uh, actually integrating uh, multiple institutions. Um, so we need some way of uh, being able to enable students to actually move from institution to institution and take their uh, learning logs with them. So. Uh, so say if a student goes to elementary school and then uh, junior high school, uh, we have a blockchain based system which actually enables uh, the student to allow the transfer of uh, their previous learning data to the new institution. Um, so this is to kind of help uh, teachers at the new institution basically overcome a cold start problem where they don't have any information about um, what the students uh, previous learning was. Um, and uh, the reason why we're using blockchain is that we're actually placing um, the ownership of the data in the hands of the actual data owners. So um, teachers can um, transfer their class data and students can uh, transfer their uh, actual own data. And um, the blockchain enables us to facilitate the, um, the secure transfer of that. Uh, data. Um, so um, why does education uh, research field need this sort of technology? Um, as I said, uh, connecting uh, learning logs across different systems. So a, a key um, element of uh, the BOL system uh, is being able to manage different user IDs across different systems. Um, also, it's uh, it's uh, verifiable. 
because it's a blockchain and it's also tamper proof. Um, and uh, because we're using smart contracts in the blockchain, we can actually uh, incorporate access management and availability. And of course, our end goal is to provide analytics and also um, being able to facilitate research. Um, so it also offers us a way to, um, to gather data using the blockchain as well across multiple institutions. Um, so there are several other uh, systems that have been um, proposed. Um, here's just a brief overview of the uh, kind of like the, um, uh, a, a comparison between our system and um, and existing systems that either use blockchain uh, technology or um, maybe use a centralized approach as in with uh, IMS um, CLR. Um, and here's basically a diagram of um, the two main parts of our system. So BOL is, looks after the actual transfer of learning logs and BOL M is kind of like a um, an exchange for learning materials. So we can transfer both the logs and also the uh, learning materials that are associated with the logs. Um, so how is book roll used in the classroom? So um, we've been uh, we've implemented uh, book roll in um, junior high school and high school mathematics, and in particular to find. Um, stuck points uh, in handwritten um, answers during problem solving. So, and um, we also currently use it to recommend quizzes um, based on a knowledge model. Also, um, we've focused on uh, language learning in particular, English as a second language um, is quite uh, prevalent in Japan. Um, so applying active reading strategies with um, the affordances of eBooks. Um, also group learning ac activities and supporting self-directed learning. Um, in book roll, we have a, a quiz function. Um, so we can uh, create simple quizzes on each page um, and teachers can also do it um, quite easily within the book roll program. So this is an example of a, um, a multiple choice um, quiz, which is being added here uh, for mathematics. Um, we get the uh, we get the students to actually uh, complete these uh, mathematics quizzes inside book roll. And here's an example um, where a student is actually using a, a, a stylus, say on a, a tablet, um, to actually uh, solve the mathematics question. And um, we collect uh, logs of all of those um, touch inputs, and we can actually uh, play back in real time um, the, uh, what the student input. And we can also analyze uh, here to see where the student is actually stuck. So we, um, we visualize it here um, where red sections of uh, the actual equation that are written um, have a longer delay between the previous strokes. So we can kind of see, try and see where the student is um, maybe pausing to think. Um, where they could potentially be stuck in their answering process. Um, to help out the teachers, um, we actually, we take um, a whole class, classes answers, and we can actually do clustering um, to see similar answers. Um, so we can, um, and this is useful for teachers because teachers actually want to um, take say, uh, typical examples uh, from, say, one typical example from the class and actually uh, explain it and talk about the uh, answering process in front of the class. So this uh, enables teachers to be able to find those uh, kind of good examples um, of answers that they want to explain. Um, before this, uh, before this uh, analysis was available, um, teachers had to go through one by one and actually check each uh, answer that the student had made. So this, uh, this uh, can help teachers basically cut down on the time that they're spending uh, trying to find good examples. And recently we've also, um, we've also incorporated a, uh, a self-explanation uh, feature for 
uh, these handwritten memos. So uh, handwritten answers. So a, a student can actually play back their uh, their answer, and then they can comment um, at a certain point in time what uh, say uh, what type of skill did they use or what type of um, things did they use in the actual answering process to um, so they can actually uh, think about how they're answering uh, from a. Uh, uh, um, Think about how they're answering uh, using the answering process. Um, okay. Um, we have also um, done some research on trying to automatically extract um, uh, knowledge structures from um, from ebook contents, and then using this to build uh, basically uh, knowledge uh, based student models, and then um, ultimately using this to uh recommend either quizzes or uh, other learning materials um here's an example of um uh, one visualization that we have for uh maths um so this basically shows the whole curriculum for the whole uh for the entire year for um i think this is junior high school uh, maths one and the teacher can see uh here an overview of where students have basically um where, where they've completed uh, some uh, specific uh, concepts and others which they haven't uh, completed. And this is based on uh, the reading logs from book roll and also the quiz answers. Um, and this is automatically updated. Uh, and uh, teachers can actually use this visualization to then uh, kind of drill down into specific uh, parts of uh, say, um, textbooks or quizzes that they want to recommend. Um, we also created uh, uh, some uh, uh, knowledge maps based on the um, vocabulary that's uh, in the textbooks uh, for junior high school. And here's an example of uh, three of the knowledge maps that we've created. So um, we can see here in this kind of subsection of the knowledge map that um, most of the nodes are uh, to do with time uh, kind of concepts. Um, and we actually use the, uh, we analyze the logs from book roll and see which, um, which, uh, which vocabulary students have read and then possibly uh, recommend say connected uh, vocabulary that they haven't read yet to then study next in um, say extensive reading. Um, and these are the sorts of uh, things that we're looking at uh, using the knowledge models for um, with the stakeholders. Um, currently, we're focusing on the um, explanation of recommendations. So um, trying to actually explain to, um, in, instead of just offering recommendations on uh, textbooks or quizzes, but actually trying to explain uh, what the basis for the recommendation was and um, also getting uh, students using the self-explanation input to actually explain to the system. Um, so we kind of wanted in a symbiotic process where the learner explains to the system and then the system explains recommendations to the learner. And um, eventually the system should be able to uh, learn with the learner. Um, okay, and I'll pass on to... Thanks, Brent. Uh, moving forward, so we are giving you an overview of uh, the kind of applications of the systems, and that's why we do a lot of uh, co-design with the stakeholders, so the teachers in this case. And I, I think, yeah. So, um, so the next context is about. Uh, language learning in specifically in English. So we also uh, want to give some uh, strategies where we use the ebook uh, affordances. And one of these works, we tried to look into an active reading strategy, which was quite old, uh, but a famous one from SQ3R. And we adapted it into the ebook context where the teacher, uh, the students can do scanning and skimming using the uh, memo and uh, the highlight features, write a question using the memo features, 
do the reading in a given period of time and then reply back uh, using, using again the memo feature. And they can use the dashboard for reflection. So uh, this, these are the steps uh, where different features of the ebook system was uh, used during the um, instruction and the learning process. And uh, we implemented that in an actual uh, junior high school uh, English context, in English course context. And there we actually found that before there was an improvement of applying this um, method. And then the students were doing much more focused uh, skin, scan and skimming process just by introducing this in a structured manner over a period of two weeks. We also saw that the quality of the questions that the students were asking uh, also improved over these two weeks. So with that, what we want to highlight is it's, uh, it's a new paradigm of uh, utilizing the technology for the language learning and uh, co-designing with the teacher what should be the pedagogy uh, while using these technology affordances. Another one is a group group learning activity. So in 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 in, in Japanese uh, schools, often teachers does group formation and for a group work. But for the group formation itself, uh, the teacher might spend quite a lot of time outside classroom deciding how the students should be grouped, and it takes typically around thirty to one uh, thirty minutes and above for them to actually consider all the parameters, uh, all the attributes of the students and then uh, group them. For example, uh, but there is, there's a lot of constraints in that context where we do not know that a particular student has some already some knowledge or we do not know whether a particular student uh, is active or their standard performances. And some of them are, outcome indicators, but some of them are process indicators. How does the student participate while they're engaging in the learning process? And given our system, we can then use all the log data, the learner logs, and then utilize it to create the groups. And uh, we have the group formation uh, system, which looks into uh, different kinds of grouping algorithm, different kinds of uh, attrib attributes of the students, and these are all linked to uh, the log data that we are collecting in the system and then creates the group uh, group and also uses the same portal uh, link to the dashboard to do group uh, evaluation or, or a peer evaluation part of it. So this was also implemented in classroom. And what we found was while learning English, if we do an in-class in, in, in uh, group formation activity for a jigsaw-based um, activity, we also saw that this, the, uh, the group activity using the system helps both advanced and standard learners groups. Uh, these were the two groups that we studied, and it helped both the advanced and the standard learners to improve uh, from a pre-test condition to a post-test condition. The uh, another part is about self-directed learning. And in self-directed learning, again, in, in the English context, they, um, the students are given uh, more than 500 uh, picture books and eBooks that they can read. And they can do this extensive reading, not only uh, in class hours, but they can pick it up uh, outside school. And they, will, uh, they would do um, this extensive reading with the materials that is shared in book roll. So with, with that, uh, we created a system, which is the goal system, goal-oriented active learner system. So uh, this system has two parts. One is it can synthesize both wearable device uh, data, and also it can uh, synchronize the learning logs which are coming from uh, book roll. Currently, I will just focus on the learning logs. And in the context of extensive reading, what it helped the students is they can they can plan for reading. And there are also some of the uh, data-driven um, uh, data pipe models that we have built uh, was incorporated in this system. For instance, uh, the goal system gives them an overview of how many days the students have read last week, uh, extensive reading book, how much time did they spend, how many pages they were reading, 
what is the uh, word per minute, the reading speed that they have? Because we have in our, uh, we have the total number of words and we can cal calculate how much period of time that they have spent. And along with it, using that, as Brendan mentioned previously, with the knowledge map, we generate a recommendation. And this recommendation gives five next book that the students can read to improve their vocabulary. So it considers their vocabulary, current vocabulary, and then recommends the book that will improve their vocabulary to the next level. Okay. And to do that, they can do it by a, a, a process step. And this is what we have uh, proposed as the DAPER model, where the students uh, collect the data. In some cases, the data is automatically synchronized in our system. Then they can analyze and check their status uh, with respect to either a group comparison or their previous uh, previous comparison of their own uh, level. And based on that, they can do a planning. And the planning uh, can be a short-term plan or a long-term plan. And all of these uh, to support this process is what Goal uh, provides the platform for. And then once the plan is ongoing, they can monitor their plan and they can then at the end of the plan, they can reflect or any time during the plan also, they can reflect on their strategies that they're using. Here, what we saw is, uh, and, and we have been uh, running this for uh, since last year, and we saw that there is a considerable increase in their reading speed. Uh, and and uh, this this has been distributed for all the uh, junior high school students in Japan. So junior in one of the public schools in Japan, and it, it is compulsory education over here. So we but we analyze only the uh, first junior high school grade. So 120 students with that analysis, we saw that they read around uh, 10 hours per. Uh, per student over a period of the six months. And then on an average, uh, they read 38 books. And importantly, their reading speed also improved considerably during this period of time. Uh, now, going ahead. Uh, so once we have all these things, we, as, as in our uh, in, in the system architecture, we saw that we want to collect evidences of what is, uh, what is, what is effective and then recommend that evidence back to the stakeholders. The stakeholders here can be the teachers who want to implement a specific strategy using, using the technology or the students who want to uh, do a specific type of learning uh, using the system affordances that are there. So in our conceptualization, we have a three uh, level of evidence. One is a micro level, which is like more of a personal level, results of a feedback for an individual student, did it work or not? Uh, and or at a meso level, which is at a course level or an institutional level, where uh, if we change a specific activity design for us in a specific course, did it have an impact or not? Or at a macro level, which is more of like uh, once this um, the system is already being implemented in multiple school contexts, so what is working around across the schools, and then uh, try to inform policy based on that. Okay. Here, uh, the, so. In that idea, it is also uh, inspired by the evidence-based medicine. But uh, what we say over here is uh, meta-analysis is an existing paradigm of looking into uh, how we can extract good practices. But with the help of the logged uh, educational big data, can we extract uh, meaningful practices from the log, log behavior analysis? And that's where uh, we want to bring more like a participatory uh, participatory approach where the teachers and the uh, researchers together can contribute to it. Uh, as that's what uh, I will repeat this. And here, what we are having is the the log data which is coming in. We uh, we are processing it and then uh, creating creating a learner dashboard which represents uh, uh, the various kind of models that are built. But at the end of it, we are also trying to create a, a infrastructure which uh, would help to have a metadata about all these interventions uh, that were implemented in the school. 
Okay, so it uh, we we conceptualized it as uh, five uh, five attributes of that. So it will have indicator. It will have a context in what context the uh, intervention was given, and some of this context information also comes from the learning management system, and the indicators with the indicators which can indicate a specific kind of problem or which can be used for uh, identifying whether a specific solution is, uh, is working or not. And uh, then the problem and the solution and the results of it. So what happens? So to give an example, so we call this the real uh, system. It's a real-time evidence analysis library where teachers themselves can make evidence. So they can they can input and some of these parts are uh, things which are coming from, as I said, the LMS. So they can input their context of uh, practice or teaching and then the system enables them to do an automatic time series analysis, for instance, and then give what was the effect of uh, a specific type of uh, instruction that was carried out in a on a particular in a particular class, and give the statistical report of that. Based on that report, the uh, teacher can then uh, reflect on on that and create an evidence case. And what we want to do is we, we collect all these different evidence cases and thereby we uh, move towards extracting evidence uh, from that. So that was a uh, uh, like a great, uh, like more of an overview of all the works that is um, done over here. You can, if you are interested in uh, uh, collaborating, you can please check the, the link that is uh, already shared in our for our project we also uh, like collaborate in uh, if somebody wants to use the tool and then do a collaborative research and there are scope of uh, sharing data but that is something uh, means uh, we, we need to um, look into what all aspect of the data can be shareable and then we also have uh, evidences that can be uh, shared so that's that's like an overview um, from our end. And uh, some of you have already received probably this notice from uh, LA Asia mailing list. Uh, but if you want to know more about our work or if you want a specific thing that you want a follow up talk about, you can please um, let us know by filling in this form. That's it. I think we'll now open the floor for any any discussion and uh, probably have the next 10 or 15 minutes for that. Thank you. So I would say that if any of you have any uh, clarification, and some of you have already put it in the chat, but if you have want any specific details at this point of time, we are happy to share uh, and discuss now. I was curious about the blockchain and um, I guess the uh, profile of the student data. Um, so I know there's been a lot of um, discussion these days, particularly like things like the learning analytics uh, conference that we just had last 21 about um, about you know the privacy and ownership of data and things like that. Um, I was curious um, about um, how that worked and about um, consent and that whole sort of process. Is there is there any particular process? Because if you're using the K-12, you know, school-related data and moving it to the university, I'm, I'm just kind of curious about how that works then, because I've been thinking about it in our context as well. Um, so for the privacy aspects, um, basically uh, we use smart contracts to define um, data owners. So um, for a student, they actually have um, uh, they have the ability to um, accept requests for their data and then um, either um, then approve it or decline it. Um, and the smart contract basically um, enables the student to have the final say on whether that um, that data is available for uh, the requester or not. Um, the same thing's also true with the teacher. So for their specific um, 
uh, lectures and things like that. Um, they also have the ability to transfer um, the, the ability to um, transfer access to the data as well. Um, we don't store the actual data directly on the blockchain, but we store um, uh, verifiable hashes and things like that of uh, the original data um, so that when the data is transferred, it can be actually um, verified whether it's been tampered with or not. Um, does that kind of uh, answer your question? Yeah, no, that's interesting. Thank you. Do you have any more questions or comments? I see, I think two more in the chat here. So uh, some teachers in my, Leon says that in his university may be interested, what materials can I share with them? Uh, probably a, the, the project landing page would be a good start. And uh, they, we have a request form over there, so they can probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Hmm? Um, press escape. Okay. Okay. You want me to add the Google form to it? Or? Uh, probably we are just trying to pull up the uh, shareable. This one. Oh, I'll paste the link. Yeah, paste the in the chat. Um, so we can accept applications for uh, uh, using uh, existing data sets we have or um, also tools. So, yeah, if somebody wants to access the tool, uh, they can have a request form. So from that page, that is something which is possible if if uh, the other teachers want to use the book roll and the dashboard system. Next is, uh, thanks Florence for the comment. Our team is currently preparing uh, uh, digital strategies around the world and it's great to have more information about Japanese contents and learn about LEAF. Okay, probably we can get in touch about it uh offline and then we have we have also shared some of the already um published research associated with it so um, that's that's also maybe a starting point to pick up uh things which are done here thanks uh i'm interested in real um daisy says what kind of interventions could the teacher input sometimes the interactions happen offline and more could be tracked in different online systems how to capture these data precisely okay so currently we do not have uh the the we we, we are um, currently trying to extract the information from the uh, leaf platform so if it is, uh, that is what can be extracted automatically. So that is the current scope of things right now. So, so if you have any more comments or follow up, then please feel free to contact with us and I will share the yeah i shared it on 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 the chat also okay so uh you can fill up the form and then probably we can also get back okay thank you thank you awesome thank you so much for for the talk very really, uh very ambitious and an awesome project and it's great to see this work and look forward to hopefully get to some collaboration as well going forward. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now.